Today's episode is brought to you by Me Undies. They are the undies I have on me right now. We'll talk about that later. Well, not the undies on me, but <laughs> you, you know what I mean. And today we're brought to you by Honey. Honey is going to save you money. It rhymes, so you know it must be good. We'll talk about that later as well. Let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghost and Friend Dog. Ghost and Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 live. In four-hour recording studio. Recording. Wake your ass up. It's Ghost and Friend Dog in the morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the episode of Cax and Credo in the morning. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> um, what's going on? No, I was just looking at this thing and I almost forgot we were doing a podcast. What were you looking at? Uh, I was looking at my Patreon thing and looking through, and I was like, wait, what did they change? And they, like, changed the UI or something, and I was like, wait, how do I do this? And I was like, oh, wait, yeah, I'm doing a podcast. That, you thought all of that in the time I said, welcome to another <laughs> exciting episode yes. of Cox and Crunch. Oh, okay. All right. As long as I know what's going on over there. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me tell you about my adventures. You had You actually had adventures? Go on. Do tell. Yes. So... Uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so far, not a great start to your adventure. <laughs> so last week, I uh, I did two personal training sessions because here we hit phase three, so we're allowed to go to the gym if it's one on one training, and the you both wear masks and you stay six feet apart and you wipe down the equipment or whatever. I'm like, fine, I don't care. I'm just gonna go there and do like twice a week and get my body back into shape. So, they go to the gym, you know, they, like, check your temperature, they do all the shit, uh, they wear the mask, whatever, and then, walk into the back, and the guy's like, alright, let's get started, and he's like, what do you want to do, and I'm like, uh, leg day, and he's like, alright, I'll do leg day, so, I started Was on he in a mask, day. too? Yes. Was it awkward to, for, like, two dudes in gym outfits, but also with masks? Honestly, not really. He was like, yeah, it's a little hard to breathe, but, you know, I'd rather do this than not work. And I was like, yeah, I feel that. And then, uh, so he was like, dude, also, this guy's, like, jacked. Like, one of the most jacked people I think I've ever seen. Uh, like, his his one arm is, like, both my arms combined. Damn. Yeah, like. So he was putting in I... time when he was not at the gym. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, uh, this dude, like, knows what he's doing. So he's like, all right. Uh, I did all my leg stuff, so every time he'd try to, like, tell me what to do because he couldn't actually get close to, like, show me or whatever. So he's just like, yeah, just, dude, I'll show you what to do. And then he'd, like, wipe everything down and be like, all right, now you can do it. And I'm like, all right, do this. And he's like, yeah, but, like, you know, just, like, do that. But, like, a little more, yep, yeah, okay, there you go. So, you know, it was a little, like, back and forth. But, you know. It, was, uh, it would be great if he had, like, a stick. <laughs> yeah. You know like how you always point. see those kung fu movies where there's the master and he has, like, that stick? And he, like... Hits the student. <laughs> it's like six feet and a couple inches just so, like, you know, you can just keep cleaning the, the end of it. Yeah, and then he, like, keeps <laughs> hitting you with it. <laughs> and when he, when he, instead of trying to get you to, like, you know, have a better form, he just hits you underneath the legs <laughs> or, like, hits your arms or yeah. something with a six-foot <laughs> pole. That'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I did leg day, and by the end of it, oh, my God, I was, like, I think I was dehydrated or something, so I needed a Gatorade. I was, like, feeling woozy. And he's like, yeah, sometimes you overexert yourself. You know, you get too crazy or whatever. And I was like, all right, you know, fine. I know for next time. So the next time, a couple days later, I'm like, all right, now I'll do my upper body. By the way, my legs were, like, sore as shit. I could, like, barely sit down. I was like, uh. So now he's like, all right, we'll do upper body. So I was doing upper body stuff, and my I was like, ah, I'm so out of shape. Uh, but, you know, I got to the end of it, like, all good. And the next day, oh my god, my my upper body is still sore. That and sounds was, right. That sounds about right. That's it was it Thursday. How it works, Friday, right? Thursday. Like three days later, and I could like, I can. Oh my god! Even if I like stretch my, you know, how you take your arms above your head to stretch. Yeah, I can barely do that. Yesterday, I could I couldn't even do it. Now I can barely do it. Uh, it's like wow. 
So well, I'm just, it'll fix I'm, itself. Give it time. You'll be all right. Yeah. No, it's one of those things where it's called DOMS, which is like delayed onset muscle soreness. And so <laughs> <laughs> better than the right. subs. Uh, and when you when you get used to working out, like back when I was working out like three times a week, your body's just like, okay, we work out and we repair. Okay, we work out and we repair. And it just gets used to that. And then you don't do anything. And it's like, well, I guess we don't have to repair. And then you start doing it again. And it's like, repair. <laughs> it like freaks out. And then you're like, oh. So that's kind of where I was at. But, you know, uh, I just I just wanted to get my body ready. You know, get back, get going. Luckily, uh, I'm in a state that didn't just open up and go, yeehaw, everyone for yourself, don't wear masks and do what you want. You know, we kind of, we slowly opened and we're still slowly opening, but you know, it's a, it's a better safe than sorry thing because now, uh, you know, places like Florida are like, bah! so I'm, uh, you know, I'm we all right. Certainly, we will certainly see what happens over the summer because, whew, all the numbers are like, oh no, it, it is not gone, y'all. But everyone's like, it's fine, go to the beach. And I'm like, I don't, I think we as a society were just like, F it. I think F so it. We too. don't care. <laughs> I'm like, oh, There's like okay. people just being like, if I die, I die. <laughs> like, all right. Like, okay, well, I'm going to try and be a little safe. You do you. You, you take care of yourself. I'll be over here. Yeah. Listen, I'm still wearing my mask. I'm still not getting close to people. Yeah. Like, I'm still washing my hands and wiping shit down. I don't care. Absolutely. Today, I uh, I went to go. So, I did a stream early in the morning, but then I was like the entire time like, man, I want a burrito for lunch. So, I went over to this burrito place that's like down the street, which, by the way, best burritos. Anyway, I go there. <laughs> the entire It's the first time I've been there in months. Right. The entire thing is like reorganized. So there's no place to sit inside. There's no oh, place yeah. to sit outside. And there's stickers on the ground that say, you know, stand here and six feet mm. apart. And so I went in there. I was the only person there uh, for 99% of my time there. <laughs> Until because, uh, you know, I'm in the tour, like one of the touristy sections of L.A. Uh, right. This couple comes in. Clearly tourists. My question is, first off, why are there tourists right now? Where did <laughs> yeah. they come from? It's very bizarre. But anyway, they came in, no mask, no nothing. And the little lady behind the counter is just like, no mask, no mask. And then they're like, what? What? We can't understand you. And they're like, no mask, no mask. And they're like, we can't come in here. Like, no mask. Uh, we just want to order some food. No mask. Uh, do you want our money or not? No mask. They're like, ah, this is typical Los Angeles. And they, like, walk away. I'm like, what the? What was that? (laughs) Everywhere in this city. Everywhere in this city. It says you can. Los Angeles is at a stay-at-home order until the end of July. Nowhere in this city can you enter without a mask. Yeah. And these people were just like, ah, typical Los (laughs) Angeles. I'm like, where the hell are these people from? (laughs) <laughs> they can't be from town. They can't be from here because there's absolutely no way they would. I I see people uh, like sort of north of L.A. and sort of some of the more like we live in the desert and we're a little crazy. And south of L.A. and like Orange County where it's like, F it, we don't care. We're not wearing masks, right? But yeah. L.A. itself, I've never encountered anyone who has ever been like, I refuse. Even people who hate it are like, yeah, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so to see this today, it was so bizarre. I was like, where are you? Where are you from? You cannot be from here. Oh, yeah, they definitely are. I mean, everyone here wears masks. In fact, I have only seen one person not wearing a mask and he just looked like some like old guy that was probably like, I don't care. And that was it. But even then, like you have to wear a mask to go in stores in any place. Yeah, like around my apartment complex, every once in a while I'll see people without masks. And sometimes if I'm like taking the trash out, I won't wear a mask Mm -hmm. because it's like I walk to the chute, (laughs) open it, dump it, come back, wash my hands. And I'm like, I feel like uh, I did good there. But (laughs) most of the time, even if I, if I, the other day I was like, man, I want an Egg McMuffin. So I went to the McDonald's drive-thru, got an Egg McMuffin, wore a damn mask and gloves the entire time. (laughs) Unnecessary? Sure. Don't care. I was like, I'm not getting sick, y'all. It ain't happening. <laughs> yeah. I got people are just like, 
but Jesse, like, not many people die. I'm not worried about dying. I'm worried about my job is this right now, talking. And when <laughs> your sickness is like, <laughs> you can barely breathe, that is not good for my work. That's the truth. So I'm no dummy. I'm trying I'm trying to like find healthy ways to get through all this garbage. I uh downloaded a fasting app. Oh. I was talking with a friend about intermittent fasting. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. And he was like, "Yeah, I do that all the time." I mostly because he was like because he celebrates Ramadan and stuff and he's Muslim, he like has to fast sometimes. Mm. But he's like, "In my life normally, I just like Intermittently fast because I was like, oh, okay. How does that work for you? Because I technically intermittently fast at night when I sleep. And he's like, yo, that's actually what it is, right? Breakfast is breaking the fast. Yeah, it is. And he's like, he's like, yeah. There's three types of fasting. There's uh, a a ten fourteen, a twelve twelve, and an eight sixteen. I think. We're like, basically the gist is you can do a 10, 14, I think is what it is. And where it's, you have 10 hours where you can eat whatever. And then for 14 hours, you eat nothing. And then there's like a 12, 12, or, you know, it's 12 on 12 off. And then there's mm-hmm. the, the like crazy. end. if you're like, I got to lose 8 million pounds, it's eight, what? Eight sixteen, And uh, that is basically, yeah. you can eat for eight hours a day. Then you have to not eat for 16. Huh? And I'm like, that sounds too much. And he's like, well, there's an app that you can get, and it'll like track the time of day for you, and you can set it, and then it'll like a thing will pop on your phone that's like, time to fast. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, I figure I'll try it. And so I've been doing the uh, 10 14. And so right now I am uh, four hours and 53 minutes into my uh, fast for the evening, and I can eat again in, at. Uh, 5.45 a.m. Wow. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's it. I can eat again at 5.45 a.m. And, uh, you know, I I assume I can drink because I've been drinking water, water and, and stuff. I think coffee. Yeah. I think coffee but I haven't blood. been, um, you know, I've been trying to, like, what it does is it asks you when the last time you ate was, and then it modifies the time based on that. Uh And so the last thing I had was that burrito today at whatever the hell time that was a few hours ago. And now I'm like, all right, well, I guess this is, this is my, this is what I'm going to try and do. And I'm going to try and make it happen. That's my plan. I'm going to try and make it happen. And we'll, we'll see. We'll see if I can keep this up. It's been three days so far. I'm like digging it. It's not hard. I bet if I did the eight 16 thing, I'd have to really cram food in. I don't want to do that. So I was like, I want to be able to have breakfast and at least a dinner, like a lunch dinner combo. Right. So that's kind of what my vibe is. And I'm working on it. It's like not, it's not too shabby. I will say it like, it shows you your blood sugar, which is fascinating. So it's like, you know, you have your sugar and then you go down like your sugar down and then you go back to normal and then you have ketosis and all that. It's Mm -hmm. fascinating. It's fascinating for stuff I've never really cared about and probably still don't care about, (laughs) but it's like fascinating. Yeah, it's not hard to do that, and apparently it's supposed to be like way healthier than just like eating three times a day at random times. Like it's nine p.m. Guess I'll have dinner, and then you go to bed at like eleven. Your like body's like, what happened, bro? Body's just all about routine. So I mean, if sure. you're if you're eating all out of whack, that's not good. Because I mean, even in in eating, like if you eat breakfast at like I don't know. Say you're like me, and you wake up at like 1 p.m., uh, but I do it consistently, and then I eat my breakfast at like 1.30, and then let's say there's a day where I don't eat breakfast at 1.30, and I wait, and I'm like, up, oh, you know, I eat it at 2.30. A lot of times, my body, then it like releases stomach acid, because it's like, up, oh, we're about to digest food, and so then it kind of just burns your stomach, because it's like, ugh, and that's what, it like starts gurgling, and you get stomach pains, that's why. Sure. And so, your body gets into the rhythm, or like... If you go to sleep, go to sleep at the same time every day. It's like, up. Oh, this is when we sleep. This is when, uh, you know, melatonin goes off. Beep, 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 beep. And then you fall asleep and you just, you know, you go in rhythm. And uh, if you don't do that, your body's just like, what the shit's going on? I don't know. <laughs> and so it's just harder on it. 
Yeah, I guess I never really considered keeping track of it and trying to keep a schedule before rather than just like, I imagine it's things I've been doing for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I could. I can't. I don't know. I figured I'd try it because I, I had a nice conversation with a friend about it. And he was like, try it, dude. What's the worst that could happen? I was like, all right. <laughs> sure. No, intermittent fasting is good. It's when people fast like too long, which I also learned from that one sleep thing, because when you don't, like, when you go into a fasting state for a while, you're like, okay, you know, you just haven't eaten for a while, and then your organs, and whatever. Uh, <laughs> then your organs. Uh, but <laughs> then your organs. <laughs> <laughs> when you fast for too long, it can actually start hurting you because, well, especially, like, your sleep, uh, because your body is like, hey, we're not, like, eating. We need food. And so it almost purposefully keeps you awake to find food. Which they said is why a lot of people at fast start getting insomnia the first couple of days. Sure. So yeah, I I've, uh, I've actually like I think been doing great. My sleep schedule is back to normal. I've been waking up every day at uh, six, and I'm like going to bed at eleven. I'm doing great. Wow. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back to normal. So <laughs> everything's good. I will say, um, being up early has allowed me to see and hear things that I haven't heard before. <laughs> so like. my neighbors that were on the other side of me that moved out, the ones that like were up all night and would blast crazy music and it sounded yeah. like they were moving furniture in the middle of the night. <laughs> now they're gone. It was kind of, at nighttime it was quiet and I didn't really hear anything. But because I'm up more during the day now, I hear the other side. And the other side is an older lady who I think I might have mentioned this before. She's she's like a wild child. I think she's in her 80s, and she has the craziest life. I I don't know if I told I, – I had to have said this to someone. Like, she was outside one day, and she was out there with her boyfriend, question mark? And they were both old, but, you know, like old hippie attractive. You know right. that look where they're, yeah. they're like, yeah. And they were sitting outside, like, talking to each other out on the balcony where the walkway is to my apartment complex. And they're just, like, standing in the middle of the walkway, just holding each other. And I, this is right before they they said no one could, like, you know, talk to each other during COVID. And she's just like, I'll miss you. And I love you. And he's like, you're the second best thing ever to happen to me. And she goes, <laughs> oh, you. You know, like, they're being playful kids. <laughs> it was so weird. But also, she has, during the day, like, some man boy come over who always has his shirt off and stuff, and he, like, does chores. I don't know, what, <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> anyway, in the morning, she blares, like, the funkiest, deepest bass line music I've ever, like, really good jams. Just like, mm. boom, 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 boom. it's like an, a transition in Seinfeld in her, in her apartment. <laughs> and I found out that it's, she does this only when she's really, really high. So I guess she wakes up in the morning and just blazes. And, uh, you know, she's my neighbor. Don't question it. I know. Um, <laughs> but, but like, <laughs> I woke up. I don't know what she does, but I can hear through the walls like, Woo! like her making mouth noises, like, Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> and I hear that every morning now, and it's amazing. It's like, Ooh! <laughs> and imagine that, but like, boom, 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 and she's like. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> and I that assume is... it has nothing to do with her older male lover and or man boy because it's so early in the morning. She's just like, it's incredible. I, I find new things every every day is a new adventure. One thing with me is my my pelvic floor has been better. Uh, I don't know if like, why are we back, back on this? <laughs> why are we back? Let us never talk about your pelvic floor again. Plus, it's been doing better. I think going back to the gym with like my leg workout helped strengthen some of those muscles around it, and it's been feeling better. Uh, and ironically, <laughs> as I've been getting better, guess what came back? Heartburn. What? That's, That's not right. what I thought you were going to say at all. <laughs> my heartburn gastritis came back. 
You ever had well, are you eating crazier right? foods? Well, all right. So you shouldn't have to go well, <laughs> comma, all right before so, beginning this <laughs> statement. That was a yes or no question. I realized I was getting like more anxiety, and so I realized I'd been like being like, I'll just have a glass of wine. Uh, but then the last couple of days, I was like, I gotta have two glasses of wine. And then I was like, yeah, I'll make a coffee to like wake myself up a bit. And then, uh, who would have thought that right after that is when it kicked in. So who would have thought? Yeah. Alcohol and uh, caffeine. That'll do it. So I'm doing my, uh, one week of heartburn omeprazole. Uh, that's just what I do. I usually do it for a week. It's like some people take it like for months. I'm like, I'm not doing months. You kidding me? So I do like a week and <laughs> I get my, uh, my stomach like back together. I let the acid calm down and then I start eating healthier. That's the thing is people don't, people do it for like, you're supposed to only do it for a week or two until your symptoms calm down. But people like keep taking it cause they're like, Hey, I don't get heartburn. I'll just keep taking this for two years. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, they keep eating poorly. But the whole point is. That you use it to like, you know, get yourself back on track and change your. I don't know diet. the rules of that. I don't know how that works. You're um, telling me things that I just have to accept because oh, yeah. I don't know what goes on in your life. <laughs> well, you're like, well, you know, you take it once a week. Don't take it two years. I'm like, I don't know that that's accurate. I, I have no medical knowledge a, of this. <laughs> you don't come from a family that all struggle with digestive issues. That is uh, that is true. My family, <laughs> iron stomachs all. Yeah, no. We're and, uh, like, hey, we'll eat it. Sure. Okay. But then there's like people like, oh, if you take it too long, it can cause like kidney problems and like the cancers and whatever down the line. So I asked Dr. John and he was like, well, that's like pretty much anything. If you do it too long, you're not supposed to or whatever. Plus he was like, guess what else does? Having too much acid. And I was like, huh, you know what? It's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you poor, know, you can. Poor John. Poor Dr. John. That man had to I leave. The, he left the state of California, and he got, he like had to get away from us. And dude, like he will never be left alone. Leave that man alone. I told him he's like, I'm like the Flanders, and he's like the Reverend Lovejoy. And I just like keep calling him, being like asking him questions about the Bible and stuff, and he's just like Ned. There's a lot of things in there. <laughs> Uh, I like so. how I do. I do like how he kind of like, <laughs> sh like shoots you away because you're like, you know, how long should I take this thing? And he's like, you know, acid also can cause problems too. And you're like, wow, I never thought of that before. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. And you put it in that ass, like, right. You're like, oh, I'm having all this GERD and heartburn and like acids coming up and burning your esophagus. But then you're like, oh, these pills to reduce it for a while can cause problems. But it's like, well, yeah, having not taking the pill and having acid burn your thing also causes problems. So it's kind of like a, you know, it's it's going to help treat the thing as long as you don't, uh, you know, as long as you're not taking it for like a long <laughs> period of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I get it. I understand. <laughs> yeah. So leave that leave that man alone. <laughs> he is not uh, your doctor. Leave him alone. Well, it's also what my gastro said. Well, then what, so you just go to him for a second opinion. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Sometimes give that man it. some money at least. He's <laughs> over did. there. I gave him bits. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, all, all right then. Is, all right, my main point here is that my main. The thing I've been talking about for months has finally let up and I can sit down again and be normal. But then all my old issues pop up with anxiety and heartburn. And I'm like, ah, my old friends back again. <laughs> <laughs> At least I know what to expect from them. I imagine you holding your chest like, ah, my old friends. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, my old friends. <laughs> uh, so tonight we meet again. So tonight I ate pretty healthy. We uh we grilled and I got some chicken. So we grilled chicken and I put turmeric on it. So that's supposed Ooh. to be really good for like uh, anti-inflammatory and like helping your stomach. So I made turmeric chicken and we had some cauliflower and uh, corn. I've been I've been grilling a lot because I bought I was like listen I miss grilling so I bought like a one of those like mini propane grills you're supposed to take camping. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> 
Yeah, I can, like, I can <laughs> picture it now. <laughs> That's so a little funny. Propane, it heats up. It's you know you don't have to deal with charcoal. <laughs> Because that's the thing is like charcoal. Everyone's like, oh, the flavor of charcoal. I'm like, listen, like it, it can taste good, but like it, it takes so much effort to like keep it hot and be like, oh, the coals are burning. And I got to spread the. Coal. I'm like, listen, you just plug the shit in, it heats up, and I'm like, all right, throw it out, and you're good. Like I just I enjoy the convenience over the taste of charcoal. It's still like, it still tastes good. How big is it? I need to know. I, I in my mind, you have one of those little tiny kerosene <laughs> camp stoves. It's not like small. <laughs> like, here, uh, <laughs> you like you heat up your beans. <laughs> that's, that's how I imagine it. Heat up your little can of beans. There, it's you that sit one. there and like, come on, toast, come over here. <laughs> I made some beans for you. <laughs> Just cook beans on the grill. <laughs> that's how I imagine it. Even a little, like, how big is this thing? Is it? You it's, said it's for uh, when you go camping, so in my mind, I'm thinking one of those little tiny kerosene it's, things. It's uh, 15 by 40 by 16. So inches? it's actually 40 inches wide. Oh, all right. Well, that's, you know, that's impressive. Yeah, that's, like, uh, not, what is that? Three group. pieces of chicken. Uh, No, you can, you can put a decent amount of chicken. That's like, here's what I did. I cooked two pieces of chicken, two corn on the cobs, and uh, some, like, veggie things. All right, that's not bad. Like, uh, not to, like I threw on some zucchini and some mushrooms and stuff. You just cook them right on there. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> that's not bad at all. Yeah, because when I was looking into it, I was looking up reviews, and there's like this one dude, he's like, I grill everything on here. I grill ribs. I grill chicken. I grill bacon and sausage. I grill steaks. I grill corn. I grill more bacon. I grill a whole chicken. I grill chicken wing. <laughs> and I was like, hey, if this guy likes it and he grills everything, I'll try it. And I love it. That's Oh, man. I That's my problem. I haven't had a grilled steak in a long time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like when you grill, you can grill outside and all the steam and everything goes out. When you grill a steak even inside, it like starts smoking up everything. You're like, bah! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but it's a lot easier. I've had like, you know, when you put it on the pan. And then you oh, throw yeah. that pan in the oven for a hot sec. And then you're like, all right, we good. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I can do that kind of steak easy, but I don't have a grill anywhere, so. No, you I get g- that. There is a grill outside my apartment complex, but we're not allowed to use it. Because <laughs> of COVID stuff. Uh, I mean, like, it's there, but and you can use it. You but... move in, they're just like, you're not allowed to use the grill. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're like, oh, like, I can, not? but like, ev- you just every time aren't. I've ever been... <laughs> Every time I've ever been inspired to use it, there's always someone down there like, I'm I'm grilling 18 steaks. And you're like, cool, <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll come back tomorrow. And I'll just go upstairs and put it in a pan and call it a day because it's just <laughs> as good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know. I, li- I like grilling. Give me some grilling. I like, I like grilling. I well, like you know, uh, yeah, it takes me back to my days of being in college, my George Foreman. <laughs> oh, yeah. The old George Foreman. Yeah, George Foreman grow where everything would come out a little gray. And you're not really sure why. Like, why is it gray? How'd that happen? <laughs> it's uh, everything's gray. That's, I'm not even joking. You would put normal meat in and something kind of gray would come out every time. <laughs> it's like McRibs. Yeah. I bet if you smothered it in sauce, it'd be delicious. <laughs> So yeah, I've been grilling. Well, grilling, grilling's great. You know what else is great? Here we go. Me undies. Me undies. <laughs> Me undies wants you to remember that it is in fact Pride Month, and it's very critical that we all take a moment to recognize and remember the intersectionality between Pride and the racial injustices that continue to endure to this very day. But they don't just want to put out a press statement. What they're doing is through their Me Undies Gives initiative, donating $50,000 to both the It Gets Better Project and Black Lives Matter. They're committed to standing up against hate and intolerance, and they hope that with Me Undies Gives, you simply shopping Me Undies will help support this cause. Me Undies are great when you put them on your butt, they're great when other people touch them. They're great when you wear them in the form of a shirt. Not that you'd put your underwear on as a shirt, but that they have shirts made out of the same fabric. <laughs> and you can not only buy them, 
whenever you want. But you can also get a membership. If you get a Me Undies membership, every month you get the softest undies that appear at your door once a month. Super convenience. Just like everything else you're getting in your life right now, delivered to your home. Everyone knows Me Undies are made from micro. Here, I found this out. It's not called micro modal, it's micro modal. Is what I heard the other day. Uh. Still doesn't explain what it is. <laughs> Still have not a clue. <laughs> I know that it's magic and it's made from trees. MeUndies come in sizes from extra small to 4XL. And if you're listening right now, you can get MeUndies your very first pair for 15% off and free shipping. That is a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it, send it back. It's free shipping, right? And they'll give you money. Like, it's a great deal. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Crendor. That's MeUndies.com slash Crendor. That's me. Also, today we're brought to you by Honey. Look, we are all shopping online. A lot. (laughs) But do you know how you can make online shopping even better? With Honey. Honey... Here's the thing. Honey makes everything better in life. That's just a fact. Honey, in this case, is a free online shopping tool that saves you money online. Honey automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart, which makes online shopping feel as easy as it's supposed to be. Imagine you're going to, uh, I don't know, like Walmart. And you, like me, a couple weeks ago, went there to go get some toilet paper. And you're like, I need some toilet paper in my life, like we all do. I went there, bippity boppity boo, picked my toilet paper out. They had a bunch, which was crazy. I was very shocked. And then I hit apply coupons when my little drop down box appeared from Honey. And they were like, goopity boopity boop. A bunch of promo codes popped up, saved me a bunch of money. I ended up buying more stuff because I was like, I need that free shipping. Honey can save you money on fashion, tech, little weird gadgety things, uh, you know, makeup, uh, Things you would buy on Etsy, whatever the hell that would be, like a painting of your favorite hey, uh, uh, ship, <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, yes, my favorite <laughs> like, ship. I meant, I meant like <laughs> as in two characters in a relationship, not like the SS <laughs> Lusitania. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> I was going to say, I used Honey the other day. I bought a new chair. And I saved like 30 bucks. What? Where did you buy that? Office Max. I just, you know how I got the honey thing installed, and it's just like, honey, I'll check your shit. And I'm like, ooh, please do. And it's like, we found the best code. And I'm like, ah, very nice. And then I purchased. It uses internet algorithms for what they should be used for, right? You have all those. I found out the other day, you know how when people give out codes on Twitter, like, here's a video game code. Apparently, there are dudes out there who have scanners that constantly scan for video game codes so they can snatch them and steal them. Those people are assholes. Hun- Wait, Honey's like the good what? guy version of that. Yeah, that's true. That's why people yeah. like instead post a screenshot instead, like a screenshot of the code instead of just putting the code in Twitter. Ah, uh, I see. And Honey is like the good guy version of that. They're constantly scanning for for all the discounts that exist on the internet, all the different codes, all the different like you know in the MeUndies. If you went to MeUndies and you were like mm, scan, it probably would be like ah, Crendor's a viable code, right? It would do that for you. <laughs> Honey has found over 17 million members a whopping $2 billion in savings. Also, did you know Honey supports over 30,000 stores online? They add more every day. Users love it. It has 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome store. It is so simple to use. It's amazing. Not using Honey is literally like passing up free money. It's totally free to use. Installs in seconds. Plus, it's now part of the PayPal family. Get me, get honey for, get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash cox. That's joinhoney.com slash cox. All right, Crendor, let's go to chapter number seven. This guy, the Crendor, the trouble there. Uh, the traffic. There is some traffic, and there is some other traffic. In fact, it's like there's a guy in a boat, and that guy in a boat sailing, and I think he's actually sailing on the SS Friendship. I think he, uh, he saw his favorite ship, 
and then he brought it to life and started sailing into the ocean. And when you think about it, uh, there is traffic in the ocean. You don't really, you just when you think traffic, you think of cars, but really, people are traffic. Uh, then you got ocean traffic. Then you got, um, I don't know, other <laughs> you can, a tractor could be traffic. Uh, I mean, literally anything could be traffic if it's moving. Uh, even a stick, a stick flying down the road in the wind, that's traffic. Back to Can you. I ask you a question? Be honest with me. Yes. Did you just remember that last week you looked up what traffic meant, and you've been thinking about that for a while, that traffic isn't just cars stuck in traffic? It is, in fact, anything? Um, <laughs> No. But it did all come flooding in at once, right when I was doing mm. that segment. Right when I said the boat, like, I was just going to do something with the boat, right? Like, he's just out in the water or whatever. But then, when I thought of that, I'm like, you know what? A boat is actually traffic. And then it just all, it all, it all came back to open. you. Yeah, I was like, oh, all, my God. All right. Yeah, you remembered <laughs> that last week you, in fact, Googled the word traffic. <laughs> also, I realized I said human traffic. And I was like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. Um, but you know, we it's... won't use that against you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's the traffic. All right, Crendor, how's that weather? Weather. Wait. Er? Yeah, it is weather. All right, weather. weather. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to weather. Uh, also, it has it has like the weather like notifications from old places I've searched. Death Valley's a hundred and four right now it was it was 99 degrees here the other day it was crazy oh. um you know what let's go to let's go to cold cold spring minnesota are you i was about to say you're just trying to find a place that's cold by looking up the word cold yes you're just hoping they name something cold that's in a cold place is that minnesota actually, it's accurate yeah minnesota's accurate but there's also cold water M missouri then Cold Spring, Texas, but it's all one word, while the Minnesota one is Cold Space Spring. Then there's Cold Water, Mississippi, Cold Space Spring, New York, Cold Lake, Alberta, Canada. And, That's probably the coldest place. And then they've just got London, England. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, well, maybe we should do Cold Lake, Alberta. That sounds about right. That's uh, the, that, that sounds cold. Well, if you are in Minnesota, it's 72 degrees. To Cold Lake, Alberta, it's 67 degrees. Look at that. A little bit colder, eh? Yeah, eh? Uh, cloudy, 5% chance of rain through 9 p.m. You got a uh, 63 in the evening overnight, 55. Woo, we dropping down. Uh, high, 67, low 52. Humidity, 63%. Pressure is 29.54. Visibility, 10 miles. You can see pretty far. Wind, nine miles per hour, going north. Uh, UV index, zero. Dew point, 54. Moon phase is a waning crescent. I repeat, a waning crescent moon. All right, everyone, get ready. <laughs> um, and then we've got the 10-day, which is 71, 57, 52. Oh, my God, 52 degrees is the high? 61, 70, 74, 73, 73, 71, 71, 72, 72. So actually, after that, it's uh, pretty nice out. But yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely a little chilly. Yeah, I don't uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that I necessarily be looking for a cold place. Actually, I wonder if this is the best time to go to a cold place, right? Yeah, because it's probably like 70. <laughs> it's yeah. actually really temperate. I would imagine there's there's some places like uh, in probably Kazakhstan or somewhere in like Mongolia that it's you know just hitting fifty right now. Well, let's find out Mongolia, uh, Mongobia, East Cameroon, Cameroon. No, uh, not in Cameroon, not in Cameroon, <laughs> in Mongolia. <laughs> Like, go to y Yakutsk. Go back to Yakutsk. What's the temperature y right now in Yakutsk? Yakutsk, Russia, uh, is currently 70. It's actually going to be like 84, 85. Damn. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. <laughs> There's no such thing as global warming. We're great. We're fine. <laughs> uh, what about, like, Iceland? Iceland? Maybe Why Greenland is, is where up? we need to go. Uh, oh, yeah, Greenland's colder. That's right. 
Greenland. You got suckered, man. They got you. They got me, dude. Wait, Greenland, Nova Scotia, Canada is 78, 76, 73, 76, 77, 77, 77. Yeah, it's like hmm. the same. Yeah, we're in the heart of the summer, I guess. It probably yeah. doesn't matter then. Well, it's All right, the summer well. fire festival. It's the uh, the summer solstice in like not that long. What about Hell Norway? What's it like there right now? Hell Norway. I typed in Northway. <laughs> Hell oh, Northway. Nor Nor <laughs> Hell Nord Trondalog Norway. Uh 80, 75, 84, 83, oh my God. 79, well, 71, 69, 70, 69, 69, 67, 68, 68. Hold on. What about uh, uh, Melbourne, Australia? It should Crikey. be winter there right now, right? Bloody winter, eh? Is that how it works? It should uh, be winter, right? Uh, Yes. 62, 57, 61, 61, 59, 56, 56, 60, 58, 56, 56, 54, 55, 55. All right, we're getting close. All right, we're figuring out there this world go. of this crazy who world of ours. Thought, who would have thought Australia's got the coldest temps? Probably. Bloody I mean, hell, there's Mike. probably got to be colder things, right? Bloody hell, Mike. Sorry. Great Australian accent. <laughs> I always try to do that, and I always don't do it correctly. That time you nailed it, I think. <laughs> As I'll someone who's never done a good one, good job. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and that's the weather. All right, let's go to sports. Sports. Uh, welcome to Sports Desk. Today, we've got some sports news. Uh, NBA, NHL still moving forward. Baseball, however, new a new proposal, and it was rejected. <laughs> We're not getting a baseball season. That's We're not, not getting happening. baseball, and I don't think many people care. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, too late. Also, uh, let's see. Bradley Chubb, Broncos, ready to go full speed. Uh, yeah, I mean, otherwise, all the other sports are like, hey, we're going to get going in like a month. So, that'll, uh, that'll be interesting. Also, Antonio Brown, our, uh, our old friend, <laughs> has pled no contest to felony battery charges and been sentenced to 100 hours of community service. Don't say, don't say Antonio Brown, our old friend, <laughs> has been charged with assault and battery. <laughs> like, I don't want to be associated with that. He's also... Brown must also serve two years probation and undergo a mandatory psych evaluation. You know? Antonio Brown, old friend of the show. Friend of the show, Antonio Brown, is getting a psych evaluation for assault and battery. Hope you do well. Hope to have you back on soon, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> Jacoby Jones is the old friend. Uh, yeah, Brown. Jacoby is our old friend. Yeah. Uh, also, Mitch Trubisky, Bears quarterback, said he's motivated by the Bears' addition of Nick Foles. So, uh, I guess he's motivated that he might lose his job. So, yeah, I mean, that yeah, is one yeah. way to motivate someone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, I'm motivated that they have no confidence in me as a QB. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they actually declined his fifth-year option, which means this is his final year as a Bear unless they decide to re-sign him, which they probably won't unless he has some miracle season. So motivated. And, yeah, and... Uh, I'm happy because in the NBA, the Bulls uh, like redid their entire front office, and they're probably going to fire their coach, who looks like an egg, and I hope they do. And that's sports. <laughs> I feel like that last part was biased. I'm not, and I hope like they do. Egg. <laughs> All right, and calm down, Jim Rome. It'll be okay. <laughs> Jesus. That's my opinion. We need to crack that egg and start over fresh. I'm Jim Rome. <laughs> I know, cause like I'll I'll still hear him on the radio sometimes. He like has his Jim Rome moment. I uh I God, I'm so glad I haven't heard him in years. <laughs> that, guy, uh, that guy's a prick. <laughs> oh yeah, he's like I get to the hard hitting news. I'm Jim Rome, and then he'll just like talk to people, and he'll be like, "It sounds like you're kind of upset," and they're like, "Yeah, well, you asked me these things." He's like, "It sounds like you're just don't you can't handle the heat," he's, and then they're like, "Well, I know." There's like I'm Jim Rome. <laughs> He's the keem star of the sports world. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's sports. All right. What is our big news story of the day? Big news story of the day is a flashback to an old story we covered that people have been sending us from... God, I don't know when we covered this. Uh, there was a story we covered a while ago about a hidden treasure 
in the Rocky Mountains. You remember that? I no, not at all. <laughs> all right. Nope. Well, I don't I remember it, but I don't remember how many years ago it was. Uh, so treasure chest containing one million dollars worth of gold and jewels found after decade long hunt in the Rocky Mountains. I, are you sure oh we God, covered wait. this? Is this it? Yes. Is this it? Hold on. I'm about to click on Hidden <laughs> Treasure, episode 51, 2014, oh <laughs> which originally aired 2013, but is uploaded to YouTube 2014. So actually, yeah, this was this was oh seven my. years ago. That's probably oh why you don't God. remember. Oh, my God. No wonder I don't remember. Wow. Seven um, years ago. <laughs> Holy <yeah>. seven crap. <laughs> So for seven, in fact, you go to the comments, someone's like, wow, you need Polaris to sign your guy's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it was so uh, long ago, Polaris <laughs> existed and ceased to exist in that time period. <laughs> hey, we outlasted Polaris. Yeah, we're doing pretty good for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> someone also, st- also said... Anyone else notice when they do the helicopter sounds? It sounds like fapping. It's me just sl- slapping my chest like this. Yep. You know how I learned that? I learned it from watching an old episode, I think, of either the Kamish or the Shield. Uh, it was the same actor, but he was like trying uh, to get like a drug dealer out of a house, and he put a, a speaker, you know, like a microphone thing up to his chest, and he went like. And the guy was like, oh, there's a helicopter outside. I don't know that it works, but I that's what am I going to do? Go. No. Um, so sure, it sounds like Crendor is jerking it while talking about the weather. <laughs> Wait, the traffic. <laughs> that's fine. Man, it's all coming together. The dude likes uh, the dude likes <laughs> traffic. Um, this is besides the point. Uh, (laughs) there's a comment on this video someone said anyone who wants to seek this treasures thing here's an idea research this guy's background and see if he got any advanced degrees or he's just really clever I have a feeling that the clues given in the poem are not the actual clues and there's some kind of code hidden within the words that are the actual clues kind of reminds me of sword quest from the old Atari days good luck everyone oh shit what was the what was his poem I don't know, but maybe it'll say it in the story. (laughs) Maybe. All right, let's find Uh, out. So, a treasure chest worth $1 million has finally been found in the Rocky Mountains. The elusive prize was hidden by eccentric art dealer Forrest Fenn in 2010, drawing in thousands of cash-hungry treasure hunters. At least five men have lost their lives on the hunt through the Rocky. Oh, my God. Wait, question. Does that mean this guy... Is this guy at fault for that? I don't... No. I mean, he literally incited five dudes to go out into the wilderness and die. Oh, my God. Okay. Imagine if after that episode we would have given up everything to become treasure hunters. We would we would have died in the woods. <laughs> you know that, right? But it's a possibility. We would have found a million dollars in stuff, and we'd both be, like, almost millionaires. Cause we'd have I can it. tell you right now, whatever that poem said, we didn't understand it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Um, but also, it, can, can you imagine? There had to have been people out in those woods trying to kill people, right? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Like, there are people out there who are waiting for someone to find the treasure, and they're like, then I'll kill them. You, oh, know, yeah, that's, that's, you know that happens. I've seen enough treasure hunting movies to know that's a thing. Absolutely. That was Sean Bean's <laughs> whole deal in National Treasure. Yeah. Um, however, the chest, which is filled with rare coins, nuggets of gold, antique jewelry, and much more, has now been found. Um, then it, oh, here it is. The thrill of the chase. Forest Fen's hidden treasure is somewhere to be found within the highlighted region of the Rocky Mountains. And then here's the big thing. Hold on. You're sending me and this? And this oh is the God. poem. Whoa. Wow. This is fascinating. Okay. It says, as I have gone alone in there and with my treasure bold, I can keep my re- my secret wear and hint of riches new and old. Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down, not far but too far to walk, put in below the bome of brown. From there it is no place for the meek, the end is ever drawing nigh, there will be no paddle up your creek, first heavy loads and water high. 
or wait, what's that? Just heavy loads and water high. Ah, I got you. This is like reading Tolkien. If you've been wise and found <laughs> the blaze. Hold on. If it's like reading Tolkien, you have to read it like you're reading an ancient script, an ancient manuscript. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look Thank quickly you. down your quest to cease. But Tari scant with marvel gaze, just take the chest and go in peace. <laughs> so why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? The answers I already know. I've done it tired and now I'm weak. So bear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. So, and, uh, hmm, fascinating. So it basically, the map is from Montana through Wyoming, through Colorado, into a little bit of New Mexico is where he says it's in that area. Yeah. Which is huge. It's a huge area. Mm. And if there's anything I've learned from watching National Treasure... 10 times <laughs> it's that from moment one like as i have gone alone in there and with my treasures bold that whole thing that's a clue yeah the whole thing that's a uh, right that's a clue it's probably that's like a clue. you know something in there like i can keep my secrets where and hint of riches new and old right that whole i can mm. keep my secrets where I bet that's a thing. People were like, oh, well, he keeps his secrets, you know, where there's a hint of riches new and old. But he's like, no, nah, dude. The where is probably like, where canyon? Right? You know, it's some weird shit like that. Yeah. Uh, Fen, that's a picture of my link, who announced the treasure hunt in his 2010 memoir, said a man from back east had found the chest a few days ago. The 89-year-old has opted not to reveal the exact location where the treasure was found though he released a statement on his website saying it had not moved from the spot where it was hidden 10 years ago. It was under a canopy of stars in the lush, forested vegetation of the Rocky Mountains and had not moved from that spot where I hid it more than 10 years ago. I do not know the person who found it, but the poem in my book led him to the precise spot. When asked how he felt about the fact the treasure has now been tracked down, he said, I don't know. I feel halfway kind of glad, halfway kind of sad because the chase is over. I congratulate the thousands of people who participated in the search and hope they will continue to be drawn by the promise of other discoveries. Fenn announced the treasure hunt in the form of a 24-line poem titled The Thrill of the Chase, which was published in his 2010 book. However, he first came up with the idea after being given a 20% chance to live following a cancer diagnosis in 1988. The poem included hints such as Warm Waters Halt, The Blaze, Canyon Down, which have all led treasure seekers to different parts of the mountains across Colorado, New Mexico, Montana, and Wyoming. Thousands have headed towards the Rockies in a bid to find the treasure, with many spending life savings and even giving up their jobs at the promise of becoming millionaires if they find the prize. Sadly, at least five people lost their lives while attempting to locate the chest, the most recent Sadly. being 53-year-old <laughs> Michael Sexton, who died in March of this year. In 2016. Oh my God! Can you imagine, like, if you'd have just waited a couple more months, you'd be like, ah, I can't get it now. I'm not even gonna lie. I firmly believe that that dude was killed by the guy who has the treasure now. Oh my God, he probably was. I totally believe that. <laughs> I completely believe that. You're telling me a dude died right before the treasure was found? Dude was <laughs> killed. Oh 100%. yeah, and then he just waited it out, like, uh, I won't tell anyone I found it. And then a couple months later, like, oh, I found it. And then it, you know, spaced it out a little bit. Yeah, firmly believe oh, that. Shit. He was like from back east. You know his name was like Don Don Jimmy the the Snooch. <laughs> Tony. Tony Don Jimmy the Snooch. <laughs> Why are we so bad at these? <laughs> the third. Tony Tony Don Jimmy the Snooch the third. <laughs> are you telling me? My little boy, Tony Don Jimmy the Snooch the third. <laughs> Found a million dollar treasure. <laughs> <laughs> that is a terrible name. <laughs> We're gonna get a letter from some guy. Tony. Tony Don Jimmy the Third. <laughs> We're gonna get a letter from the second. Yeah, he's like, he's oh, like, there you insult my father the third. <laughs> or wait, I guess that'd be the first. The son. Is the son. Oh, there you insult my son. The third. I'm gonna say I'm gonna contact my grandfather. Wait, hold on, my father, his grandfather. 
<laughs> Tony John, Jimmy the Snooch, the first. <laughs> and he's going to get all his boys. Uh, man. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. In 2016, Randy Bilyeu died after hunting for the gold, while Jeff Murphy, Pastor Paris Wallace, and Eric Ashby all died searching in 2017. That sounds like a movie. That sounds like a terrible... I honestly... I know this. I know this guy meant well. He meant to like before he goes. He wants to give people a good hunt, yeah. like a modern day treasure ch- quest. But <laughs> five people died. <laughs> yeah. Like if you really wanted to give him a thing, he would have been like, "I put five two hundred thousand dollar things slightly hidden around the world, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I didn't hide them in the mountains. They're like, you know, somewhere safer." <laughs> so I mean. Maybe he was just bitter, and he was just like, yeah, go get it, you idiots. I don't know, he doesn't sound like it. He sounds like he lived through cancer, and he was like, I have money, and I want to like give it away in a fun way. I, I On paper, if you don't think about it, this sounds like a YouTube video, right? Like where someone's yeah. like, let's make a YouTube video, and then someone gets hurt, and they have to make an apology video. That's what this kind of <laughs> sounds like. It kind of does. You're right. It's just like, it's thought it'd be a fun thing. Just thought it'd be a fun thing. People got a little carried away. You know, we're just trying to have some fun. Uh, it's just, yeah, I'm sorry. Apparently, Fenn wanted to lure people to the Rockies as part of an old-fashioned expedition for riches in the wilderness, despite calls from New Mexico police to call off the hunt, which they branded nonsense and insanity. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> if you think about it, he should... This is what happens. You become too rich, no one tells you no. There is no one in this man's <laughs> life to be like, Sir, I... I I don't think we should do this. What if we just gave it to charity instead? <laughs> um, well, now uh, J- Tony Don John Jr. the third or whatever, he's got that money. Tony Don John Jr.? That's a different guy. <laughs> yeah, he might you don't know. He might have gotten it. Tony Don John's sounds like a <laughs> really fake Italian restaurant. <laughs> we got the best fish fries. We fry all our fish in pure gold. It reminds me of like, what's that one place? Uh, it's like what? Tony Roma's. Tony, yes, Tony Roma's. <laughs> oh, you know Tony yeah. Roma's the guy who got it. Oh, yeah, he probably did. The original Tony Roma came out of, I don't know if that's a real person, <laughs> came out of retirement. And he's like, I'm going to get me that snooch. How does Tony Roma keep opening restaurants? <laughs> Finding buried treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Third buried treasure I've found. I open a new Tony Romas. <laughs> you but say, really? how can I afford to keep it open? Buried treasure and Spanish doubloons. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. He took that treasure from the guy who actually found it. Right. No, of course. So he didn't find it. He killed Don He's... John Timmy DeSnooch. He killed him. He's like, damn you, Tony Roma. <laughs> He's like, never spit yeah. my name off your lips again, the snooch. Yeah. Got him. Yeah. Got him. And that's, uh, I guess that's a that's a case closed. <laughs> there you go. We figured it out once again. It's a Cox and Crendor case, but book onto the shelves. ka We have to have that sound like ka that sound effect. ka You know, well, where it's like, case don't. closed. ka I know for a fact we're not going to edit that in, and we have no way of uh, doing it right now. <laughs> So <laughs> just uh, find everybody just find a sound effect similar to that and play it right now and then use your imagination. I bet it's yeah. just as good. <laughs> yeah, use your imagination. All right. Well, that is it for us. Thank you so much for listening or watching or however you're enjoying this podcast. Crendor, hit them with the socials. We've got socials. Go to youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. All one word. You can go listen to that old episode if you want. And, uh, you know, like button, subscribe over there, do whatever you want. Then go SoundCloud. You got SoundCloud, uh, Cox and Crendor. You got Spotify, Cox and Crendor. You got uh, iTunes. You got other places that have our audio. You've got YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor, which is where you got all the animations. Go watch some animations. Dan's funnier than us. Also, uh, check out our stuff. We got Twitch.tv slash Jesse Cox, Twitch.tv slash Crendor. Facebook.com slash Jesse Cox. Facebook.com slash Crendor. YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox. YouTube.com slash Crendor. 
Twitter.com slash Jessica. Twitter.com slash Credor. Instagram.com slash Credor is taken. Instagram.com slash Notorious Cox. Tell everybody you know. <laughs> I think we did it. I think we got through all of them. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, <laughs> to be continued. <laughs>